Hi, I'm Everett Maxine, and I would like to thank you for listening to The Absence of Her. Please like, follow, and most importantly, share. Not a podcast app fan? You can follow me on YouTube at Everett Maxine, E V E double R E T. She's moved on. The alarm went off today. But you won't show for work. Sunday has come and gone, but you won't be in church. Someone will be knocking, but you won't answer the door. Because Mama doesn't live here anymore. Her position has changed, her job has too. She is done with the things on earth unlike me and you. Mama, you were a servant of many and jealous of none. You left a rich spiritual inheritance to your daughters and sons. We must follow God no matter what others do or say, because we know that we too must pass this way. The God she so faithfully served saw her suffering and alone. He went and got her while she sat resting in her home. The choice for you was easy. Because your work here was done, you were a living example of God's glory to everyone. Life without you, Mama, won't be easy, but no one said it would be. We had great memories that will live on in me. Today's intro I read, She's Moving On. Written by myself, Everett Maxine. That poem was written in 2018 for the celebration of life, service for my late mother. Losing a parent at any age can be sad, hurtful, and difficult. I have seen different responses to loss. Overeating, excessive consumption of alcohol, depression, suicide, Anger, hopelessness are all negative results of loss when someone finds it difficult to cope or move on without their loved one. I strive daily through prayer and faith to renew my mind on how I view death and loss. Philippians 3, 7 through 21. speaks about loss, and if we lose all things, we still can gain Christ. As I have shared before, saying goodbye to my mother hurt, but it did not destroy me because of my faith. I have an understanding that God knows our beginning and our end. Who am I to argue with God? Who am I to tell my creator that wasn't her time? I loved my mother enough. That even in my moments of grief, I would not beg her back to this life. In her absence, I gained so much that I would have never gained if she was still here in the physical. I was taught that when somebody dies, they are making way for new life to come. From my experience, I believe loss not only makes clear for new life, but paths We would have never traveled and faith and strength. We never witnessed within self to move forward in life. When the life of a loved one has stopped. Philippians 3, 7 through 9. But whatever, friends, money, cars, homes, whatever, were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. We should not hesitate in submitting to Christ during our loss and seeking the orchestrator of all things for understanding and guidance. 
What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. A relationship and getting to know Christ should be above all things, even the loved ones we treasure. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ. If I must lose everything on earth to gain a place in heaven, it is all worth it for the earthly life is short, but the eternal life is forever. And be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. In her absence, there has been a change in my faith, my follow through and my future. Faith. Complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This scripture is read and repeated so often. But how many times is it actually applied in our lives? A relevant visual Rent is past due. You have about $200. You are barely getting hours at work and still need to use money for gas to get to work and for groceries. The tires are barely making it on your vehicle. The oil change light has been on for two weeks. Can you have faith in that moment or frustration? Or is saying God is our provider just something you say, but when your faith is tested, you crumble into tears, depression, and worry. Instead of praying about a problem you can't solve and leaving it in God's hands and trusting him and his will for the outcome. Hebrews 11.1 says, faith is confidence. Confidence means to have firm trust. And what we hope for, an assurance, freedom from self-doubt about us not being able to know exactly what God is doing. And when faith, exercising our faith, is really tested, it increases our belief in God. If you are a babe in Christ, And have just begun to walk with Jesus. I can understand your doubt when you're lacking. How can Jesus be a provider if I'm lacking provisions? Jesus wants us to be humble enough to bow before him and ask for his blessings. Hebrews 11 and 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Without believing in Jesus, we can't expect to operate in his favor. Jesus comes first or should come first in our lives. He gave his life for our sins. Think of your best friend, the person that you have known for years and even some of the skeletons you have in your closet, if that person didn't believe in you to be a good friend or when it came down to their personal business, they were uneasy talking to you. After they know all your business, how would that make you feel? Jesus already gave his life for you and your sins. And not having faith is like saying you don't believe in him enough to trust him. Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. This scripture scripture does not mean ask God for a new car and you get one, but yet that heaven has an open door policy. If you pray for understanding, he can grant it 
If you seek the word for scripture to give you answers and guidance, you will find it. If you go to him with the door to your heart, he will open you up with his love, compassion, and ability to be content. My faith had already been tested and tried many times. With a few leading up to my mother's passing, I tried to develop a deeper relationship with Christ. Not for financial wealth or material gain, because where my soul ended up is the eternal life mattered and still matters. I had no peace because my life was not in alignment with God. 21 days before my mother was found deceased, I told her about the therapy I had been attending for a year and a half. Therapy was for me to heal and I also wanted a better relationship with my mom. Faith. June 19th, 2018. She is dead now. What is the point of continuing therapy? Faith. Because it's God's will. God's timing. And therapy was also taking layers for me to be able to know myself. To know who he called me to be. To serve my purpose with confidence. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. All the time I thought I had totally submitted to Christ, I was operating under grace. It was the small things that I missed when she passed on that made me realize my faith had not been exercised as it should. Borrowing a few dollars until my next paycheck instead of seeking God on how to manage money better. Quitting jobs at random. Borrowing a vehicle when mine was down. A place to lay my head when I didn't have one. And the conversations that made me laugh or just have someone around that looked forward to seeing me. In her absence. I could have saw my life as empty, but I poured my soul out to God even before I knew she was deceased. Don't get me wrong. I miss my mother. There were moments that I had to pray for understanding as to why she went like she did alone. But she had faith and God tells us we're never alone. I don't think losing her would have been any easier had I held her hand until her last breath while she laid in a hospital bed. My faith has not failed me. God has not failed me. And I want for nothing. When I began this podcast, it was a faith walk. Who would care to listen to my life experiences? Would someone mock my truths? Would someone get angry about the level of transparency in which I am revealing myself? It all crossed my mind, but I committed myself to Christ. My marriage was over. My mother was gone. And Christ needed to me to be a vessel to reach people that were hurting and are hurting and suffering. But hiding their scars because of shame or no one relating to their experiences. I am happy I share and continue to share on behalf of Christ who is within me. My follow through. In her absence, my ability to follow through with goals and employment has strengthened. My mother was a nurse aide for the Legacy Nursing Home for 28 years. I have some jobs I didn't even keep for 28 days. 
I had so many jobs one tax year. I had to wait on 10 W-2s. Now that she has passed on quitting a job, educational endeavors, financial goals is not an option. I was supposed to orientate with my current employer June 20th, 2018. We found her deceased June 19th, 2018. So I had to push back my start date. During a time that most would have been hiding in bed, bearing their grief with comfort foods or alcohol, I started a new job and returned to finish my bachelor's degree after a five-year gap. There were days I was totally exhausted to the point of tears. I had only begun to navigate life as a single adult a few years before, and now I was motherless. There are some days I still try to find understanding of it all, how I'm surviving it all. How do I get up and breathe and be motivated? And I know it's nothing but the God that I serve. Not about life and death because we all have expiration dates, but on mornings after I've worked 12 hours overnight. Then sleeping in the vehicle until class started because the university was just a few minutes from my job. Sitting through class lecture and sometimes getting a brief nap at home before I would have to door dash deliveries to have enough money for gas and food to get me through the week. I was so tired, I would just cry and tell myself, what's the point of this? I am tired. I am worn out. I am beat. I wanted to finish school to do more for her. And now she's gone. But I would live another day. Work another shift. Take another nap. Attend another class lecture. And do more deliveries. And attend my counseling sessions. In the natural, it seemed impossible that I would be successful, but spiritually, God's supernatural strength was within me and he was covering me. I was grateful to God for the opportunity to finish my degree. And now I'm glad I kept praying, kept pushing, kept a positive mindset. Because November 2020, I graduated from Texas Southern University with my degree in education. 2020, a year when most only saw loss, I received some of the greatest blessings and lessons. The world may have been on restriction, but the spiritual realm was not. Even in the midst of my final semester, life's challenges were still happening. But by now, I remember my God moments and had faith and followed through. John 10 and 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Because of my job location and attending classes on campus, I spent a lot of time on the road. In the vehicle was during the time I talked to God the most. Fall 2020, my student teaching assignment was almost an hour from home without traffic. Most days there were plenty of traffic. Saturday, September 26, I had returned to my hometown to clean out some of the things in my deceased parents' home because I had been trying to prepare it to be sold for a while. That weekend did not go as expected and it put me in a pit of sadness, missing them. I still had deadlines of assignments for school, student teaching daily, and working full-time overnight. I was overwhelmed. And Tuesday, September 29th, put in for a leave of absence, even though I had no vacation time left. I was stretched thin and mentally crashing. The very next day, I was about 10 minutes from home 
when I was involved in a five car accident. My paid for transportation, my mother's truck was now destroyed. I sat on the side of the road and just cried uncontrollably. So many memories of me and mom riding together, gone. My transportation to work, gone. My transportation for deliveries, gone. My transportation to student teaching, gone. I had been drugged across the highway by another vehicle, knees swollen, but in that moment, all I could feel was defeated. What was I to do? Paying tuition and gas, the student teach left my account looking real bleak. The first was the following day and only it had half the rent saved. I sulked that evening especially after calling my job to tell them and for my director to say my leave had been approved. Hmm. What if I had requested off sooner? What would I do without transportation? How would I make the rest of my rent? I don't even have a car to sleep in if worst case happened and I lost my shelter. But remember I said my faith had increased? Because in her absence, I was forced to exercise my faith and depend solely on God. I ain't have a pity party long. James 2, 17, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. My situation wasn't done. The next morning, still sore and swollen, I rented a car with a few hundred I had saved for rent. That evening, I began deliveries for funds to pay for the rental and left the rest up to God to guide me and provide. It was a challenging three weeks. I didn't lose my home either. I had considered purchasing myself a new car after graduation because I'd be making a greater income, but at the time, it was just a thought. A Thursday afternoon, I was scanning through social media to see a dealership was offering help to anyone to get a car. My first thought, it's a gimmick, my credit score is low, and I have no down payment. And even if I managed to get a car, the note and full coverage was not in the budget. Being negative, full of doubt, but God was telling me, go. So I exercise that crazy faith. Many <laughs> would have not have done that same night. Now, actually, <laughs> I made an excuse to miss my appointment with the sales agent that night, browsing the vehicle, saving those I liked to my profile. It kept gnawing at me. So I went to the dealership that Friday in complete faith. I walked in with nothing. I told the salesperson, ma'am, my father was a salesman. I have no down payment and my credit sucks. So I already know how this process is going to go. She sent me to test drive a car anyway. The exact SUV from my profile that I loved. Got back inside the dealership. She says, ma'am, we need just $4,000 down. Ma'am, I have no down payment. I told you exactly how this was going to go. You are going to have me test drive and come back and say, we just need this amount. She smiled and sent me to test drive an old Camry that wasn't my style at all. I'm not a window shopper. I don't even browse for clothing. When I'm shopping, I envision exactly what I want and that's what I get. Broke with bad credit and no transportation. And I still refuse not to settle for what I didn't want. Who wants to pay for something they don't like? I left that night with no car, but I wasn't disappointed either. Because I still followed through with thanking God for life, health, and strength. 
The last thing the sales agent told me that night was a bank had given a conditional reply, but they would not know the conditions until the morning when the bank opened. The next morning, I called the dealership. The bank had changed their mind, now wanting an $8,000 down payment. Oh, well, typical car buying experience. I made a quick little Google review about my experience and took a nap. I woke up to a text from the dealership manager and a message from the finance department that I had been approved for a car. Still not excited, I laid back down. I called the dealership three hours later. To my surprise, when I arrived, I was approved for the vehicle I wanted with no down payment. I thoroughly read the paperwork to check for a balloon payment, estimated the payments in my head. I do math real quick and it seemed reasonable. I drove the rental home and used Lyft to pick up my new vehicle. My heart was still mourning the loss of my mom's truck. Being excited for something new and a new bill was hard. It wasn't until two months later when the payment book arrived with my name on it that I believed it was actually mine. God can and will do above what we ask or think. And I still have that vehicle now and he has provided financially the means to pay for it. The income for the payment has been with ease because when God does it, it's not a struggle. Sometimes he has to force us out of our comfort zone to level up to elevation he needs us to be. And my future has increased since her absence. In December 2017, I created a vision board on Christmas Day, suggested by my therapist. I illustrated through pictures my past, present, and future. It is now four years later, and I have completed almost everything on my vision board. Two priorities were my financial and educational goals. Although I had begun pursuing a bachelor's degree right out of high school, I had failed to complete it. Although I had often kept an income, the longevity of me being on a job was rare. My work history was almost as unstable as my finances upon her passing. I did not even have a bank account. I lived paycheck to paycheck and saw nothing wrong with that as long as I could eat, bathe, and go to work. School was on the back burner along with everything else. That should have been a priority. It has been almost three years since she passed away. And I'm still with the same employer. I began with a month after her funeral. There have been many days I was tired, frustrated, and wanted to just quit. But I took several deep breaths, cried the tears I needed, and and remembering my safety net was gone. Do I have family that would purchase a meal or buy me a little gas if I need it? Yes. But to be a constant crutch of help? No. Things change when mama is gone. Her death left me feeling as if I could either sink or swim. I could allow depression, sadness, hopelessness, and tears to swallow me up and hold me down until I drowned in self-pity or Swim with all my might to stay above the water. And when I have exhausted my own strength, stay with Jesus so he can keep me floating, safe and calm. The decisions I made were solely on me and the consequences, good or bad, I was left with to deal with. The year she passed away, I had a goal to return to complete my bachelor's of education. I had drawn a graduation cap with the year 2019 on the future section of my vision board. 
I was surprised when I spoke to my advisors upon registering in the fall of 2018 that I could possibly complete my courses and graduate as early as 2019. I was ecstatic, followed by disappointment after disappointment, then embarrassment of constantly sharing with families and friends that I was going to graduate and steady push back. But I didn't give up. In her absence, I had the faith, the follow through for a stable future. I returned to TSU after five years. I spent mornings sleeping in the vehicle after work to attend classes. My lunch breaks at work were nap time. I spent free time at work completing assignments. I walked in faith when it came to my tuition bill. I stopped worrying about being disappointed and embarrassed because I was completing a goal and no one else's judgment mattered. My only competition is with self. Wasn't an easy task to complete? No. And I could not have gotten through all of it without increased prayer life and a closer relationship with God. Completing assignments in your late 30s while working overnight is completely different than when you are straight out of high school working part time with no independent adult responsibilities. I am happy to say my pursuit of education was worth it all. My graduation in November was followed by successfully passing my math science content exam, December 2020. After two prior failed attempts. And then I completed my certification PPR for the state of Texas in January 2021 on the first attempt. In her absence. I have some tears, miss her smell, and the sound of her calling my name. But I recognize that to lose is to gain, and that my faith, my follow-through, and future serve as examples that there is purpose for my pain. I am Everett Maxine, and I would like to thank you for listening to The Absence of Her. Please like, follow, and most importantly, share.